Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Peter Nolan from uh, Halifax in Nova Scotia, and I own New Age Sharpening. And the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to sharpen a serrated knife. Now, I'm going to give you a few different options. I'm going to show you how I do it, and then I'm going to show you a couple other ways to do it in case you don't have the equipment I have. Not everybody has water stones or fancy ceramic rods of this, such a diameter that fit into the serrations, but I'm going to show you workarounds so that you can do it. Now, so what you're going to need is a obviously a serrated knife, and I've got a couple here. Uh, one is a regular serrations, very old. It's probably a $40 knife. And the other one is this beautiful Tajiro ITK. And it's, you can see it has a different a scalloped edge. So this is a beautiful Japanese knife. But I'll show you how to do them, how I'm going to do them. It's not that hard. The good thing is serrated knives don't need to be sharpened as often as regular knives, uh, regular edge knives. So because, uh, you know, straight edge knives, because with multiple points of pressure, it distributes the, the stress that we put on a knife uh, more evenly. So it, maybe once a year. Now, some people, because of this, they only use serrated knives. They don't get their many knives sharpened. That's the only thing they'll sharpen with, uh, use, is a serrated knife. Because even if it's dull, it's going to get through something. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but it will happen. So, but the bottom line we need to sharpen our serrated knives every now and then. And the other thing is, it's not that hard. Okay? I figured it out. And everything I show you, doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean I showed, I invented it like that. I'm just, just, just the way I do it. And I want to just share it with you. So, you need to understand the concept first of what it is we're trying to achieve in order to achieve it. We need to create... Every one of these serrations you'll see has to be worked at. And what we're trying to do is we're going to use an abrasive. Now I have this nifty little ceramic hone that actually fits perfectly into each serration. But I'm going to show you a workaround. So we need to form, uh, use this abrasive to remove the fatigued metal that's formed on each of these serrations. And you, all can off, you can often see it. If you look at it carefully, you'll see a white light. Uh, that's metal that's been folded over and it's, it's causing your uh, knife to be dull. So our goal is to force that fatigue metal onto the back of the knife. So the key elements are we're going to form a burr and the more difficult part, but the critical part is that we're gonna remove the burr, okay? It's, if you can't do that, it's, it's not going to work. So we need to form a burr, then to remove it. So I'm going to show you how I do it. First thing I do is I pick up the knife, the serrated knife, and I have this ceramic hone that fits into each serration. Okay? So I'm simply going to draw this. Uh, you can't see it very well, I suppose. All I'm doing is drawing this knife. And don't sweat the angle. Don't worry about that too much. It'll come to you. You'll, you'll get it instinctively. You'll, intuitively, you'll know what angle to hold is at. All I'm doing is forcing this ceramic rod about six or seven times down each serration with, a, with moderate pressure. And I'm going to force that metal, fatigue metal, to the back of the knife. So I'll just do a few here to show you. So it's all I'm doing is running this rod down this serration part and you will see and feel that it forms a rough spot on the back that's what we want that's the burr so now the critical part is i have to remove that burr okay so all i'm going to do what i'm going to do and you don't have this obviously maybe you might not have a water stone this is just an 800 grit stone you can, and all i'm going to do is i'm going to push Lay this bla uh, blade almost flat on the stone. And I'm going to talk to you about the danger of the aesthetic danger of doing that. But anyway, we have to remove that burr. So all I'm going to do is use the abrasive power of this 800 grit stone to shave that burr off. The burr is the metal that I've pushed over to the back of the knife. Okay. So when I'm doing this, Think of an avalanche of steel coming down the side of this knife, but it doesn't fall off, it flips over to the side. So you have to remove it, and that's all I'm doing is going like this, and that's how you that's how I sharpen a serrated knife. Okay? However, if you don't have 
this tool here, you, there's workarounds. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. One is if you don't have a, uh, a hone at all, ceramic rod like this. You need an abrasive. So this is 220 grit wet dry sandpaper. And this, picture this as being a wooden dowel, uh, a pencil, or even a chopstick. Believe it or not, a chopstick is good because it tape, it's tapered, okay? It's nice and hard. So where you're gonna wrap this abrasive, and this, it doesn't have to be 220 grit, could be 400 grit, could be 600 grit. You're just gonna wrap it around this rod, or your dowel, or your pencil, or your chopstick, okay? And I'm just gonna hold it in place like that. Now I'm gonna replicate the, the, what I just did with the hone, and I'm gonna use this rod, this abrasive, to run through each of those serrations. So all I'm doing is doing the same thing with the sandpaper. You can put some water on this, I would, and just go back and forth, holding it. You're gonna hold this firm on something, on the end of a book or so it's elevated a little bit to give you access to the serrations, okay? So believe it or not, that will then force a, a burr, I can feel it already, on the back of this knife, okay? That's, believe it or not, that's the easy part. The easy part also is understanding what it is we're trying to do. Remember, we're gonna form a burr and remove a burr. The, the burr is only gonna form on the back of the knife, really. So how do I get rid of that burr if I don't have a water stone? So you got a few options. You can use that sandpaper again. Just going like that, down the side of it, like that a few times until you can't feel it. What you want, when you run your thumb over the black of this blade, you, can't, you don't want to feel anything. If you feel anything rough, any abruptness, that's the burr you haven't, haven't got rid of yet. So just do it. Do it again until it's gone, okay? And your knife will be sharp. You may have to repeat this process because removing the burr may flip some of it back over to this side. So just have a look, do it again as much as you can, and then do it. go back and forth doing that process, okay? And I guarantee you, your knife will be sharp again. It's not It's not that hard. So what if you don't have some, you could, I picked up this little diamond uh, stick basically at Lee Valley. Same thing. I could use that to remove the burr. It's beautiful. I mean, it comes in, it's handy. It'll last forever, okay? Or what if you had a little file, a fine, this is a fine file, and just ran that down the back of the knife, okay? So you're forming the burr with the abrasive and you're removing it with another abrasive of your choosing. Whatever you have lying around the house, okay? So, I'm gonna show you one more method. What if you do have a water stone like this? So what I've done, I've taken this water stone and I've rounded off the edges of it. I don't want any sharp bits. So all, what if you just went like this? Flip the knife over so the serration parts are done and just ran that knife at an angle that you choose. I'm up here about probably 20 degrees and I'm just gonna run that down so it goes from heel to tip as I'm going back and forth. If I keep doing that enough on this coarse stone, again, it's forming a burr. I can already feel it again then I'm just going to remove it. And I can do that over and over again. Now, I mentioned a, uh, an aesthetic danger here. These abrasive, these stones are abrasive, so it could scratch up the side, the edge of your, the back of your blade. So if you're doing this for yourself or a friend, just be warned that you could scuff up the back. However, if you just get some sandpaper again and just sand it off, it takes about less than a minute to remove those mark, the marks. You could also put some painter's tape down there to protect it. Okay, this is this serrated knife, normal one. Now I'm gonna go to the dream serrated knife. How do I sharpen this Tajiro with a scalloped edge? It's the same thing, but you can, because the this, because this, uh, serrations are more uh, widely separated and more forgiving, I can pretty much just run this 
uh, rod or your sandpaper all the way across like that. I can just go like that in one continuous sweep. I could also do it e even, I can do it both ways. I can do each serration separately, nice and gentle, and then blend it all together with this one motion. But then I'm forced with the other issue on the back again, okay? Then I'm just gonna remove it with the same thing. So it's the same process. And this one works even better if you're gonna use a stone on the side of the stone to do it. I have flipped the knife over so the serrations are down towards the stone. And I'm just gonna run it nice and gently over the edge of the stone like that. And then I'm gently gonna remove it. Now, I'm just got it up by a couple of degrees so I don't scratch the back of this beautiful knife. So really folks, there's no excuse to not be able to do this. You can do this for five or six bucks. You can go and get a wooden dowel of a, such a diameter that fits into the serrations. You get some sandpaper, some water, some uh, a bit of courage is needed to get this all done bit of passion and persistence and you'll get you'll nail it okay it's not that hard and the knife will stay sharp again for a very long period of time okay so if you have any if you have any problems with the production uh, bit quality of this video let me know I'll talk to my uh, produce producers and you know what I'm gonna fire them anyway just because assuming that you don't like the quality of the video because it's just an iPhone 12 I'm using okay so consider them fired. Anyway, have any questions? I'm sharpenerpeter at gmail.com. That's sharpenerpeter at gmail.com. And I'm always eager to help. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe.